welcome, welcome, welcome once again to Let's Talk Marriage. This is Pastor Larry coming to you this Wednesday afternoon with Let's Talk Marriage. All right, all right, all right. We're going to get right on into our program on today. I hope everyone is doing well. If you woke up this morning, you are doing well. All right, our program on today is we're going to be talking about chemistry between two people. All right, all right. Let me pull up my... Oh, here it is. Okay, now... Chemistry focuses on the characteristics between two people, including uh, mutual interest, similarity, and intimacy. Uh, a lot of people think when you mention the word chemistry, uh, this is a good subject because we have Valentine's Day coming up. And make sure you do right by your loved ones, amen, by your spouse, amen, make sure you do right by them. Anyway, uh, let me repeat that again. Chemistry focuses on the char- char- characteristics between two people, including mutual mutual interests, similarities, and intimacy. And it's not just intimacy. It's a lot of other things. You have to have something in common with the person, whether it be a vision that you have together, your goals that you have together. Uh, a lot of people... Uh, get unequally yoked in which the Bible speaks about that for all you uh, all of our Christians uh, second Corinthians uh, I believe is 6 and 14 uh, which is where it mentions uh, don't be unequally yoked with an unbeliever uh, but th- what basically what that means is you should not be if you're a Christian you should not go out and marry someone that's not a Christian unless they are and then you have to be careful in that area because sometimes you meet someone and uh, when they find out that you're Christian, they want to pretend like they are. So that's why it's important to make sure that you find your soulmate for the men. Make sure you find your soulmate for the women. Make sure that it is your soulmate before you walk down the aisle. And before you get serious with someone, make sure it's going to be your soulmate. Most of the times you will know uh, when it's your when it's going to be your soulmate, Uh, because a lot of times you'll get intuitions on how that person is. And if you watch that person, you're going to know that that's going to be your soulmate. There's uh, so many uh, people that are joined together or get married and they have nothing in common. They have, but you, cause you, you can tell when someone has uh, chemistry between each other, when you see a, a husband and wife that has chemistry between each other, it, it's, it seems like everything they do together, it flows together. There's, there's no, uh, no conflict between them or just nothing clashing between them. And, you know, even in uh, public, you can you can tell, you know, and the ones that don't have have chemistry between them, you can tell you can very easily tell. That's why you uh, when I always say when you uh, seeking counsel uh, uh, with a married couple or a couple that's been married a long time. Watch the chemistry between them or watch how they interact. Uh, that's another uh, meaning for chemistry, the way the interaction between the two of them. If they, You can tell when someone is a, a couple that's always bickering because they, it's going to come out. <laughs> It's going to definitely come out. And no matter what they're doing, it, it, it's just whatever they're saying is going to clash. And, and you know, you're going to see the eye rolling, you know, and, uh, you know, I'm going to talk to you about this later. Or Can I see you in the kitchen <laughs> type of conversation? So you have to uh, make sure that you watch these people, especially when you are seeking to get married and you. Uh, believe that you found your soulmate because when you find your soulmate uh, trust me you will know it's going to be your soulmate and a lot of times your soulmate is not going to be identical to yourself in other words they're they're not they're not going to be other words they're going to be an opposite of you Uh, most of the times they're going to be an opposite because they you know how they say opposites attract because you have to take two things and uh, two people and put them together and if they're the same thing they're going to 
especially if you argumentative. Uh, if you're an argumentative person or a person that always like to be right, you don't want to get with a person that has the same mentality as you. Because guess what? You're going to clash every time because you always right. He think he's always right. Or if you have a person that's argumentative, you don't want to get with another person that's argumentative because you both are just going to be arguing all the time. So you get with a person that uh, don't like to argue and you have a person that's argumentative and they kind of balance themselves out. It balances itself out. Uh, so that's why you have to make sure that you have that chemistry between each other. And, uh, you know, with Valentine's Day coming up, a lot of people think, again, that uh, uh, having chemistry just means intimacy. Uh, that's a major part of it, but that's not the whole thing. Having chemistry, again, is you're going to see those. When you see those people interact, and you, you can tell you know, you can tell when that, uh, even though they've been married for several years, that husband still know how to make their wife blush, or the, the wife can look a certain way, and the, and the husband look at her a certain way, and you can tell the chemistry between them, and, and you, you can find some couples that been married, uh, they just got married for the wrong reason, and they still together for the wrong reason. <laughs> So that's why you, you don't jump into a relationship with someone uh, just basically on uh, how they look. Uh, if you get someone that looks good, that's a plus. But that's not always. Uh, and that's why, how, how a lot of people miss their soulmate because they're looking for something in their mind what their soulmate should look like but uh, what you need and what you want is two different things uh, God will sometimes God most of the time for all the time give you what you need and rather than what you want uh, because something what you need because sometimes if you get what you want uh, it, it's not going to work out it, there's been so many people that married somebody they wanted for years and years and years and it still didn't work out because that wasn't the person that was meant for them uh, so you have to be careful what uh, what chemistry is and I, and I mentioned again that opposite do attract let me let me read this uh, thing here that I found and, and I actually found this in the Bible okay now now, we all know about Solomon. Okay, Solomon, uh, he wrote the Songs of Solomon, which is a, a ultimate love uh, poem. And listen to this uh, portion of the Song of Solomon. Now, Solomon fell in love with someone that was opposite of what he was. He fell in love with a black woman. A lot of people don't know that. Now, let me read this. This is from the song in the beginning of the uh, Song of Solon, Solomon. Solomon, uh, we see the romance between uh, the Shudamite woman and King Solomon in verses one, five, and six. Uh, the Shudamite woman notes that she is black, that she has kept her vineyards for others, and her mother's children were angry with her. The fact that she is black indicates that she has spent her life in hard uh, field labor. She has not known luxury, nor has she been able to uh, preen or care for herself. In other words, she was totally opposite uh, from what Solomon was used to, and he was attracted to her. So God put people together uh, with, uh, with uh, chemistry that... Uh, matches what they need because when you mix okay when you mix a chem when you mix chemistry you have to take two different two different things and put them together in order to get one outcome or to get a certain outcome that's why God put two different people together to get one outcome and that's why I mentioned in the Bible that when you once you're married you become one because you get two different people and you put them together and they become one and that's where your chemistry is. And uh, make sure that we are loving on our wives. And, uh, you know, and, and when you are looking for a spouse uh, or you're hoping to have a spouse and, and men that are looking for a spouse, make sure that you look 
at their heart. Solomon saw the heart of this woman. Uh, she wasn't a glamorous woman. Uh, no doubt she was very beautiful, but she was not a glamorous woman. She didn't come from a palace, and uh, she didn't, you know, she wasn't uh, of a rural background, but he saw something in her. And uh, that's how it is with uh, when God put two people together. You see something in each other. And sometimes it's, it's not always about what they look. That, again, that's a plus. Uh, but when God gives you someone that's beautiful and, uh, you know, uh, that's, that's a plus. But sometimes God puts you together with someone that's opposite, someone that uh, people, because uh, sometimes people uh, talk you out of being with their soulmate. Is that that's the one you want? Ugh. <laughs> you know, so sometimes you, a lot of times you can't listen to what people say. You have to follow uh, not just your heart. You have to follow your mind. And sometimes when you follow your mind, uh, it'll it'll give you the right uh, or point you in the right direction. And you have to be prayed up on that. Uh, again, Second uh, Corinthians says, "Don't be not unequally yoked." And sometimes we get unequally yoked with people just because of the way they look. And uh, just because the way they look, just because they look good, don't mean that the, that's the person for you. So you have to make sure that when you are thinking about choosing a mate, make sure you uh, be wise about it. That don't. Uh, sometimes you can't listen to your heart because your heart is going <laughs> to tell you, uh, or lead you astray. You have to think. You have to use your mind and your heart. You have to use both, not just one. You have to use both. Use your mind and your heart. Uh, you think about it. You, you you have to know these people before you walk down the aisle. Uh, know uh, everything about them. You know uh, when they where they were born, who their parents are, how they get along with their parents. Make sure you you know all these things. And also, once we get into these relationships, we have to work on because uh, when God puts you with someone, or when you with someone that's your soulmate, you have to learn to trust them uh some people have a hard time uh especially if you because i know when i uh, uh first got into my marriage i uh i was going to uh, i went through a phase when we first got married because of the marriage that i came out of you know sometimes we have to let things go we have to uh have closure uh, within, uh, especially if you came out of a bad relationship, you have to have closure within that relationship. And just because you were in a bad relationship, sometimes it's uh, the relationship was bad because both people were not, un they were unequally yoked to begin with. And uh, that's why sometimes the relationship ends, uh, goes south or end up being a bad relationship. So we have to make sure that we are uh, following uh the word of God. We listen to uh, listen to God when we're uh, when we meet someone, and make sure that you don't jump into something right away. Uh, know those people, and uh, once again, we I start talking about trust. When once you get into that relationship with your soulmate, you know you will know it's your soulmate because they bring out the best in you. Uh, your soulmate is always going to bring out the best in you, and they'll take you. Will both go to levels that you had never been before. You will ch make achievements. You you know I hope that some people say a power couple. You you'll become a, a similarity to a power couple where you both have uh, goals and you begin to reach your goals and things will start to work in your marriage very well. Even though you might have. Uh, uh, when you first got into marriage because you didn't realize it didn't you knew it was your soulmate but you weren't really really ready to let go of things from your past that's why you have to have closure from things from your past because you could be with your soulmate and because you have things from your past you'll be uh, hanging on to that you won't be trusting them because once you uh, know that that's your soulmate if you know that's your soulmate learn to trust them you know and a lot of times in relationships uh because of what we went through in the past or what happened along the way uh we tend to not uh have that trust uh built up in our relationship it, it's not going to be an easy thing sometimes you have to work toward it and sometimes you have to make sure you have closure uh from a previous relationship 
And that's what, because uh, even though you might have your soulmate, if you're bringing baggage from a previous relationship, it's going to be a hindrance in your relationship with your soulmate. And your soulmate is there for life. Uh, let me repeat that. Your soulmate is there for life. They're there uh, for the good times. They're there for the bad times. They're there when uh, doing sickness. They're doing. They're there. They're just there for you. They're gonna have your back. Uh, they're gonna have your side. They're gonna have your front. They're gonna hold you up uh, when you fall. They're gonna hold you up when you're weak. They're gonna hold you up when you're going through some things. You both are gonna go through them together. So yeah, when you have chemistry in a marriage, that's what chemistry is. And we just think a lot of uh, people think that when you mention chemistry, it's always about sex, but it's not always about sex. And to me. Intimacy does not necessarily mean sex. That's a part of it, but it's not the whole thing. Uh, intimacy, intimacy is a uh, is uh, the characteristics between two people, including mutual interest. You have mutual interest. In other words, you have goals set. Uh, say, for instance, you plan on uh, purchasing a house, you plan on getting a house together, you plan on raising uh, your children together, and that conversation needs to be had before you marry someone. If they, cause some, Nowadays, uh, some people, a lot of people don't want to have children. Make sure you make that clear to the person that you are plan on planning a future with. Make sure you understand whether they want children or not and how many children that they have. And if they already have children, have blended families, make sure they are working together because sometimes you can have blended family where uh, one of the uh, families is not doing what you normally do. So you have to make sure that you take all that in cons into consideration uh, when you enter into a relationship. And um, when you have chemistry between two people, that's when you come together uh, as one. You come together on several different occasions as one. Uh, you love on your wives. You love on your husband. And you, you don't downgrade them. You don't talk down to them. And, uh, and, and, don't, and learn uh, how not to be uh, your spouse's biggest critic, you know, uh, sometimes you have to encourage yourself, even though uh, they might uh, have something that you don't like or do something that you don't like. There's something you talk about, you know, uh, a lot of times we criticize each other and, you know, and, and then the uh, trust level comes in and we have to learn to trust each other in these relationships, especially when you know that that's your soulmate. You have to make sure that you just do everything in your power to keep that relationship going in the right direction because you don't want to be both to be going in two different directions. And that's another thing about being uh, unequally yoked. You have to be going in the right direction. That's why it's kind of hard. It's not impossible. And uh, let me make that clear. It's not impossible to uh, God gives you a soulmate and one, because sometimes he'll do that. Uh, he'll give you a soulmate where the other party is not in. If you're in church, they might not be in church at that time, but it's up to you to uh, bring them in the fold. And sometimes if that's your soulmate, they'll end up in the fold with you. Uh, so you have to be uh, you have to know that uh, when it's your soulmate. And again, once again, when you see your, when you meet your soulmate, you're going to know it. Sometimes you, you might be in denial like, oh, I don't know this. this look, uh, <laughs> look uh, no. Uh -uh. <laughs> and then and then after a while, it, it'll start to come to you. It'll get clearer and clearer to you that, oh, yeah, this is yeah, he's a nice person. He. You know, he he he's so attentive. You know, he he's a gentleman. You know, I, you know he avoid uh, arguing with me, especially if you're a person that's <laughs> uh, confrontational. You know, <laughs> because you know uh, some people always want to be right, and if you're one of those people that always want to be right, in order for there to be chemistry in that marriage, you have to be with someone that's. You know, that's 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 don't have the problem with saying I'm sorry first, because if not, you're going to be constantly arguing. That's why a lot of people, a lot of people constantly have these 
arguments and, and what do you, what do you need to be with someone where anytime you turn around you argue and you you in an argument you get in public you you know you you, it, it, you know it don't stay at home you get in public you argue and you know and you know and you've been together for so and so years if you want that marriage to work uh, seek some counseling to find out why you are constantly bickering between each other. Find out why there is a chemistry b- breakdown, <laughs> and that's basically what it is. When you have the, you both love each other, but there seems to be a breakdown in the marriage. Marriage, and that's a chemistry breakdown in the marriage. Make sure you seek some counseling to find out why there is a chemistry breakdown in the marriage and usually if there's a chemistry breakdown in the marriage is because this could be something that's stemming from your past that again that you had no closure on or have no closure on you have to close out chapters in your life you can't take an open book into a marriage an open book from another uh, relationship into a marriage you have to close that chapter in that book before you uh, jump into another relationship and when you jump into that relationship that's when the because you can't mix the wrong chemistries uh, chemicals together if you mix the wrong chemicals together you're going to get explosion <laughs> <laughs> That's why a lot of marriage explodes because there, there's just chemistry is mixed wrong. You have to have the right chemistry in order to have a successful marriage. And uh, uh, God loves marriage. Uh, you know, he smiles on marriage. And, you know, and uh, that's one of the things that it seemed to be downplayed nowadays is not cool to get married it seemed like uh most people want to uh live together forever or why would you have a boyfriend for 10 15 years that's kind of (laughs) strange you should make a commitment to move forward in the relationship or take the relationship to the next level you can very well have a good chemistry a good relationship with that person you know and you you know you get along very well why not take the next step and don't uh have the fear of just because uh you're taking the next uh, step that it's not going to work out because you were doing fine uh, before you got married. You know, you could have been doing fine before you got married because you weren't sharing everything. Uh, because once you get married and walk down the aisle, you have to share everything. Everything becomes an open book between the both of you. Uh, that's why you leave open books from another relationship. You leave that in the past. Uh, This is Pastor Larry. I'm going to be signing off. And I hope everyone have a beautiful Valentine's Day. Make sure you make some plans for Valentine's Day to take your spouse out. Make sure you buy buy her some flowers. I know some uh, church folks don't believe in Valentine's Day. Oh, I don't believe in Valentine's Day. Uh, No, it's just a a day for us as uh, Christians. It's a day to celebrate love between uh, man and wife. Uh, So... Make sure that you are treating your wife uh, right for Valentine's Day. Uh, get her something. Take her out. Uh, don't be so cheap. Uh, <laughs> don't go down and get that one rose. Think you do it. Think you did some. <laughs> at least if you, you have come in the house with one rose, at least have the other eleven roses. You know, in a vase or something. <laughs> so make sure you are treating your spouses right. And make sure we uh, have that chemistry and keep that chemistry going between each other. And, you know, when you have chemistry between them, a husband and wife, they they kind of feel each other. Uh, they sometimes they can uh, they feel each other thoughts. That's how you know that. And when they're again, when they're in public, you're gonna notice it. When you gonna you're gonna notice it when they don't have any chemistry. You're like, oh, okay. All right. <laughs> and those type of people, you don't want them to try to tell you anything about marriage when you notice they don't have any chemistry. But the ones you notice they have chemistry together, you, you can look at the couple and you, you know, and where they're smiling a lot. They're hugging on each other. He might be whispering uh, things in her ear and, you know, you're going to see her blushing and, and things of that nature. Uh, <laughs> so make sure that you are. Uh, have that chemistry between each other. Make sure you are equally yoked together. And when God gives you that soulmate, you're going to 
know it. You're going to know it right away. You're just going to, you know, play you how you women do. You like to play it along. But you know right away when he's the one. You know, you'll tell all your friends. You'll tell everybody with him right away that he's the one. <laughs> he's the one. He's the one. And you don't even have a clue. <laughs> you just going along like, I hope you like me. I hope you're feeling me. You know. Uh, this is Pastor Larry. We're going to be signing off. And uh, again, have a wonderful Valentine's Day. Make sure you take your sweetheart out. And you, because you, uh, if you think about it, you might not take her out all year long, but make sure you take her out that day or a day before if, you don't want, if you're trying to avoid the crowds. A day before, a day after, but make sure you do something for them. Uh, this is Pastor Larry. I'm going to be signing off with Let's Talk. Marriage. All right. Until we meet again, this is Pastor Larry saying, God bless you. Now, remember all the music that you hear on Let's Talk Marriage is from an app called Whoop Triggers Plus. You can find it on Android and the Apple. All right. Until we meet again, God bless you. Thank you.